morning. Um, I live in Bangalore, so Bangalore is notorious for traffic. So I thought we could change coming to Pune, but uh, Pune is giving a real tough fight to Bangalore in terms of the traffic and the competition. So it's not been an easy ride, uh, even though we stay very close to the, the venue, but it's been. So we're not missing Bangalore at all in Pune from a traffic perspective. So. <laughs> Okay, uh, so my name is Arvan, I'm the Vice President for Global Training and Certification and, and so whenever I go, people ask me what is RPA, is it physical robots, we know of robots, we've seen President Kant in the movies and all of that robot. What RPA is, there's nothing physical about it, it's a software robot. So RPA is Robotic Process Automation, why the word robot came in, we don't know, it's process automation. Because it's done by somebody at the background, it's probably called Robotic Process Automation. So RPA is basically a technology um, uh, which, which sits on your laptop a desktop and it's a software which creates something called a software robot, it's called a bot. Those bots mimic human behavior to automate a lot of processes. That's in a nutshell is what it is. These guys automate processes which are very very manual. Mandar talked a lot about digital photo auto in terms of automation, how human beings should start automating processes which are mundane, routine and all of that. That's exactly what. So it's very nice that he set the last part of the presentation as a leading one for me. So what RPA does is basically that. It automates all processes which are large numbers, which are very, very rules driven where human mind doesn't have to think at all. It's basically rule based automation where the bot, if you can put something in the form of a PPP and say that if do this, no do that, then the bot is no thinking at all. So that's what RPA is all about. Large numbers, it's consistent. The advantages are it doesn't take a WhatsApp break, it doesn't take a Facebook break, it doesn't have fights with bosses, spouses, and it doesn't go for a deep break, it has no mood fluctuation. And works 24 by 7. So those are big pluses why corporates love RPA because it's 100% it's compliance and, and there's no error at all. That's why it's a big, big plus and to automate. And net net, what is the human mind? The human mind is not supposed to do the routine jobs all over time and again. Right? We're supposed for creativity, we're supposed to think. So this frees up the human mind to do things which you are born for. That's why RPA is so successful and why people seem to love it. And an RPA is something which has been talked about by the industry tremendously. If you look at some of the data points that have come out saying that one in terms of NASCOM has called it or one of the eight future technologies. They want to create about 20 lakh jobs in the eight future technologies, RPA is one of them. So, uh, and if you look at the salary levels that are coming out, in terms of disruptive technologies, everywhere RPA is definitely there. The market is on a very, very high boom and, and uh, when a market booms up, there are more customers coming inside, which means more people are coming inside. I'll address a little about the shortage and what the industry and academy can do together as well. You see the video of automation anyway, but this is broadly what we are. This digital workforce, 15 lakh digital workforce, that is the bot that is in production. Our aim is to take it to 30 lakhs. Uh, that's where we headed towards. We've got about 15 lakh bots working across the globe, automating process and freeing up so much of human manpower so that they can start thinking and doing something very, very great. The offices, I joined about two and a half years back when we had about 600 employees. Three or four offices. Now we've got 33 offices, um, 2,300 employees, and that's very large for a company which is scaling up so fast. <coughs> Some of the customers across, many. So whenever I say RPA, they say, is it an IT? So this is, is a horizontal. It works across different organizations, different functions, which is why uh, you'll have customers across different verticals, whether it's retail, um, mobile, look at. The banking, finance, across industry, it's called factories. Everywhere, everybody needs something to automate from a software perspective. Which is why RPA is relevant, which is why the job prospects for students are very, very high. If you respect of what domain function they've taken up, there is a possibility for them to work on RPA because it's agnostic to the industry, it's more relevant to the function that they're working on. This is just a scale what we've been able to do. Some of the large customers scaled up so well. We've got about 10,000 bots working in some companies. That's the amount of automation that people have gone. The larger the automation, the, the larger the benefits. So this is a snapshot in terms of how the journey of RPA has actually evolved. I mean, if you look at it, we started with the base automation where we did a lot of manual process going on. Then things started getting automated with RPA. And then we had a digital workforce, which is where a human being is working side by side with a bot. In the sense that I, I'm an employee, and working with a bot as an assistant. There are companies which measure productivity of an employee by way of the productivity of the bot. If you're using a bot more, which means you are freeing up a lot of time for good work. So companies are measuring people on the productivity of the bot itself. That's a digital assistant. It's more like your assistant 
which works on your machine automates. So look, where are the users coming in? So for example, if I'm a teller in a bank and there's a person who walks inside, there are about seven, eight processes which I have to do in terms of know, why, know your customer. If a bot does three or four, I can process every applicant faster by about say half the time. That's a big benefit for anybody who walks inside, which is a huge plus, and that's why we're saying this is the way that things are moving out. Then we have the digital bot store where companies are putting up bots on the website and saying that's like a marketplace like what Amazon or Apple has done. And, and anybody who builds a bot, that's a new industry altogether. Individuals who want to be freelancers, not working with an organization, start building bots. They become bot builders, they build up bots and start uploading it and start making money. Because companies saying, I don't want to build a bot altogether again, let me download what somebody has built. So it's a revenue option. That's a huge economy, bot economy is coming up. These are the way by which the options are opening up. So when people say that automation, what's going on? Like what Mandara was talking about, digital 4.0 is all about a tsunami coming inside. When I, in my age, when I did one, I did my MBA or engineering. That was enough to survive my entire career of 25, 30 years. Gone are the days. The children of the college kids of these years, it's over. Like the people typically say it's a tea structure. Where T is the, the breadth and this is the width. of. If you're good at one technology, then you could survive in my age. Gone are the days. Right now, people are looking like a comb structure. No more one technology is enough because the change that's coming is like a tsunami. Meaning in earlier days it used to come, last for about 20 years, 30 years, that's how it was. Now every three to five years the technology changes. So if you're a specialist in one, three to five years is what you can guarantee you. But if the students don't learn more and more technologies, learn more and more skills, they're going to be redundant very, very fast. That's a disadvantage of digital photo auto because the skills, what is required, are very, very different, changing really fast. And, and one of the days where people say, give me knowledge. Knowledge is important, but people are looking for skills. When you mean skills, it's hands-on experience, like Mandar talked about 20 pages. It's good to know what you're talking about, but companies are looking for students who have done something. If a student goes and submits a biopsy profile and says that, I have done all of this, but I've built bots on this, I've done something on cloud, I've done something on 3D printing, that's a profile that's going to be Because companies are looking for skilled students, no more looking for students who know of your things. So, this is Automation Anyway University, which is the partnership that we've got with ICT going. And we're talking about what are we doing in this? In this, our aim is to see how do we have the largest set of trained workforce because the jobs are there. Okay. This is a report from NASCOM. NASCOM presented this report in our conference last year. And, and uh, the jobs are in huge demand across the globe. India is the global leader in, when it comes to automation, at least software automation. China is the leader for the physical robot automation. But software automation, India is the hub. And this is here that the jobs are going to come in a very big way. There's a shortage of skilled workforce when it comes to uh, RPA itself. So if you go to the market and say, I need a Java trained person with about 15 years of workforce experience, you will find people. But if you go to the market and say, I need an employee with about Three years of RPA experience, you will not find anybody. It's a new age technology and the demand is very, very large. Which is why it benefits a college student because the college student is almost on par with the working professionals in this particular skill. And which is what the data has also come out from NASCOM which says that universities need to transform the curriculum, upgrade the faculty and start providing some of the new age skills to students. So our initiative with ICT Academy is to see how do you partner with colleges, <coughs> take this learning to the colleges so that they are employable, they are able to get the job that the market wants, and able to provide some, something meaningful to the nation as well. The various types of work, but broadly the engineering college is the one that are going to benefit because the jobs are all about people who can build bots. If you have expertise in a lab, if you know how to build bots, the chances of employment are very high. And that's a job that people are looking for. If a large organization is building up a, a team say RPA, about 80% of the jobs are going to be bot builders. And these are all engineering college kids who know how to build bots. So the moment the students know how to build bots, they've got a certification from automation anyway. The chances of employability are very, very high. And companies are looking for certified students before they graduate. So this is what we do. And I mean, this is some data about I can't, I mean, I just flip through these slides because of time, but I'll address the crux of the issues in a while. We already have relationships going on with a lot of universities. We've got over 100 plus universities across the globe where we partner with and provide RPA education to the students, to the faculty. 
and, and clearly our partnership with ICT is to see how they can do a lot more in India. Because we are not a training organization, we are a product organization. The skilling part is going to come from ICT. We believe that they have got the best gear to take this to the masses, to take it to a lot more engineering colleges and provide what is required for the industry. Which is why we believe our partnership with ICT is going to take to the masses and provide the scale which they are completely qualified to handle. So we have done this on our own side. We've got about 16,000 kids who have taken courses across and we've got certified. We've got about 130 universities. In Pune itself, we've got a few colleges where we partner with them to, to set up a bot lab and train students. Some of the students that we have from a global perspective, uh, these are students who realize that RPA is important. We don't have a partnership with the universities, not necessary. But the students from the premier institutes believe that it's very important for them to learn RPA to become more employed. This is, these are the places where we set up actual physical lab. When I talk about knowledge versus skill, when I have say partnership, we actually set up an infrastructure in the college. When it means infrastructure, the college provides laptops, machines or a lab is provided. We go install the software, we go train the students and the faculty. That's what we've done so far and I still take that. But broadly, the engagement with these universities is to train students and make them employable. We've done something called a bottom on also, where we had a competition in different parts of uh, India and, and the students won the prizes, which is iPad, iPhone and all that. We get the fancy prices just to get the interest because the kids had no clue what RPA to start with. So for us to create the prizes where the attraction, students start taking interest. And now we've had companies, for example, TCS last year hired about 420 students from colleges who were certified on automation anywhere. Virtues have picked about 120 students through the bot lab partnership which are in college. So clearly there are job opportunities and companies are looking for provided the college can facilitate this partnership and the colleges can force the students to go and learn additional skills and not just stick to textbooks and not just look to the mobile phone look for videos. Data is really cheap these days, right? So the, the, the competition for learning is with movies. I mean, you download something on YouTube and watch, that's, that's what the children are. But the college will have to drive students to move away from the geo phone, which give free data to, to the labs, so that students practice and improve. Once the employment happens, then the chances of better students coming inside is here, better employment, the college change keeps up well. So, what are the values? The values are the students are able to learn a few skills at no additional cost. They get to learn a lot of stuff which is available online, that they can learn. The colleges get a lab which is worth at least a crore of investment on our side, we are not charging for that. So that's an additional benefit for the college. Once the college puts up a board, say there's a board lab of automation anywhere, the, the, the placement opportunities and the visibility that they become is very high. The companies believe that this is a new age college which is very progressive and they want to work with those particular colleges. The faculty, in addition to teaching what's mandated by the curriculum by UGC, AICT, learn something new to teach. That's the biggest plus for the college. Uh, the faculty. The faculty learn something new and they in turn can start teaching the students as well. This is a big plus when it comes to that. There are certifications which are available. Globally recognized certifications are being given to the students as well. So clearly we have the ecosystem in place. It's not something what we're doing new. A lot of companies like Microsoft the world or Autodesk the world. So they've all been doing it for years. We started it and we believe because of the scale at which RPA has been adopted globally, we want to fast track it and see how we can benefit the ecosystem. It all starts with an MOU which we sign up with the colleges, ICT is going to drive it and then they'll say that for us to set up the bottom lab in the second phase, we will have an MOU, we will give e-learning access, we will give training, we will give software, practice, lab, all of that is, is the way we're going to do. But clearly this model works, has worked in few colleges, has failed terribly in many colleges because of the interest of the management and because of the lack of interest from the students. So the management believes clearly, the faculty believe it's good. But the students, they are not able to try. Any, any, any change which is any part of the chain which fails, this program is not going to be success. That's a biggest result mandate. And for us, for all the investment that we do, we want it to be worthwhile for the students, for the faculty, and for the partners with ICT to make it worthwhile. We have a lot of interest from multiple colleges, but our bandwidth is limited. So we can't go to everybody that we want. Any college which doesn't show the interest or doesn't want to reflect addition, We'll probably cut it down in the next year and not show the same interest. So it's clearly it's in your interest, your college responsibility to see how to make this program a success. From our side, everything we can will do. <coughs> so this is the certificate that people get. It's a globally recognized certificate from Automation Anyway for the students who clearly the certification. Um, and and uh, these are the two courses which are available 
which will be made available through ICT other platform they can start accessing every student that gets gets a badge a badge is a globally recognized one so students who complete a badge can put it on the profile and say I have completed this money it counts for something everywhere a student they will differentiate himself or herself from the rest of the pack it counts for something so these are additional learning which we encourage the students to take it up and we encourage the colleges to push the students to take it up because it's it's coming to live on a platter. These are some of the talks that have come from college faculty like NUS in Singapore or Christ University, Dan and Sagar. All of the guys have talked very well about the partnership that we have with, with the colleges and how it's benefited them. So this is the partnership that we signed up last month. Shiva, Anbu, all of them today. I'm really happy with the partnership that we signed uh, in the midst of uh, very senior people from AIC, UGC, everybody was there. So it's really a great occasion and we're very, very happy that what we signed up last month, uh, it's already in practice. So this is what ICT has already launched it. This is the program which I'm sure sometimes they talk about it, but this is the website that's available where what, what unleash the name of the program that they call it. It's their program on our platform. So clearly all credit to the team from ICT Academy for launching it in really fast time, less than a month. They've come out of the program, the structure, what the process is. So this is available on ICT Academy all the colleges have to do is sign up for the courses and start ensuring that the students learn and see how they can fast track the learning for the students so that next semester when the companies come for hiring in say July, July, August when the companies come for hiring. It's important that the students of the sixth semester are saying, yes, I've done something more over and over than college curriculum. I've got these badges, I've done something on board, I can build a few pods. At least it differentiates them from the others. They may may not want to work on RPA, but all I'm saying is that encourage them to take the additional skills which is important for them to learn, build up a profile, make them relevant in the industry for a few years because the colleges can only do so much. It's very difficult to change the curriculum substantially. It's important to understand the industry academy partnership which helps the colleges where they can't. We are going to come forward and help them to partner with ICT Academy. And that is why we're saying let the students learn, even if, if it's a civil engineer who is very sure he or she is not going to take the job, but let them learn. There's no harm in taking up an additional certification. It's going to help them at some point in time, make them relevant. It at least proves to the world that there's continuous learning which is happening. And that's what people look for. People don't look for technology skills. They look for, are you learning more? The more and more they demonstrate like what Mandar talked about, the willingness to learn the soft skill. That is what they want to demonstrate taking more and more this program. ICT has partnerships with many more organizations as well. They should take up as many as they can because it's, it's very good for them build a profile, build a career, and, and uh, be relevant to the industry. Industry is looking for trained workforce, ready to be deployed, skilled workforce. And knowledge is good, but skills on the ground, hit the road running is what they're looking for. And we are very happy to have part of the ICD Academy to help the engineering colleges, to the students, and see how we can make a distribute, make a, make a difference in the country, and to the students of the Thank you very much.